we often hear this again and again. The ultimate reality is beyond language. Language cannot express it. But what do you mean? Why can't words express it? Why can't language express it? Uh, that a scholar I was talking about who is doing his PhD on silence, somebody joked that that's an awful lot of things to say about silence. <laughs> Big thesis about silence. Avya Pradeshyam, why do you keep saying that the ultimate reality is beyond language? Why cannot words express it? And remember, you are using words to express it. After all, all of this is words. The Upanishad is words. So this has to be understood. Shankaracharya, he explains it beautifully in his commentary. Why is this ultimate reality, the fourth, Brahman, and the ultimate reality of this universe, why is it beyond language? What can language do? Shankaracharya, he uh, asks there, how does language work? Language requires these five things to work. Any one of five factors, if it is present, language can work. And all of this is based on Shankara's commentary. He says, first of all, jati. Jati means class or species. So if an object belongs to a set or a class, then you can use that to refer to that language, uh, uh, to, to that object. You can use language. So example he gives is um, cow. So this animal is a cow because there's a set of animals called cows and this, this animal shares those characteristics. You can put it in that set and use the name to indicate this object. So a car, anything that is a part of a set, a boat. It could be a small boat, it could be a huge cruise ship but you can call them all boats because they belong to a set of boats. So can you talk about Brahman like that? No, because there is no class of ultimate realities. There's only one. So you cannot use language as a class to designate Brahman. Here is an ultimate reality. There are lots of these ultimate realities, you know, here's one of them. But no, there's no lots of ultimate realities. It's not a class of things. Another way language functions is by quality. So there are flowers there. And if I say, bring me a red flower, immediately you know, white flower, yellow flower, red flower is there. The Swami wants a red flower. You pick out the correct one and bring it to me. How did you know? How did language work? I use the quality red to distinguish that flower from other flowers having different qualities. So some have um, white color, some have um, yellow colors, but some have red. And you used that quality to distinguish it from everything else. That tall person, call him. How did you know whom to call? You looked at who's the tallest one among these people. A quality. So quality can be used to designate something. Language works sometimes through quality. In Sanskrit, guna, quality. But you immediately know Brahman is beyond all, all qualities. It is called nirguna, beyond all attributes. So it, Brahman has no quality of its own. All of quality belongs to something in waking, dreaming, or deep sleep, but not to Brahman. So you cannot use quality. Another way language functions is through action. Action. Um, compliment the cook. The dishes are wonderful. Now, who, whom do you know to, how do you know whom to compliment? The one who cooked these dishes. Cooking is a function. Call the, call the boatman. The passengers are ready to depart. How do you know whom to call? The one who drives the boat. So function. One way language works is through function. If something or someone is doing something, use that action to designate that person. But Brahman, the ultimate reality, pure consciousness, has no function. It just is. It's isness. It just is. It, it shines. That's all. It's not a function. You cannot use function to designate that, that fourth, the ultimate reality. Um, then there is another way language functions is, uh, look, language functions. <laughs> There's another way that language functions is relationship, sambandha. The guru. The guru is a guru only when there is a student. Without any students, you can't call the guru, the, the teacher a teacher. Father. The father is a father only if there is a son or daughter. So there's a relationship, and relationship requires two. You can use, use language through relationship. 
But relationship requires at least two terms. There cannot be two terms because the ultimate reality is non-dual without two. So therefore, you cannot say language. You can use relationships to in indicate um, Brahman or Turiya. It has no relation with anything else. Why? Because nothing else exists. How can it have a relationship? It's like saying the screen. What relationship does it have with the character of the movies? Nothing really. They don't exist. Only the screen exists. But the other way is not true. The mo characters in the movie, the movie itself, depends on the screen. The world entirely depends on Brahman. But Brahman does not depend on the world. Brahman has no relationship with the world. The classic example of snake and rope. So, you know the example? By mistake, sometimes a rope is taken to be or mistaken to be a snake. In the darkness, maybe you see something, oh, it's a snake. Sometimes the opposite happens. So you have to be careful. You say, oh, it's a rope. It must be a rope. The Swami keeps talking about rope and snake. What did he say? The snake is actually a rope. Okay. But sometimes it turns out to be a snake. <laughs> Whatever it is, a mistake is made. What it is not, you take it to be that. So it's not a snake, but you take it to be a snake. It's a rope. Now, between the real rope and the imaginary snake, what relationship is there? If you catch hold of the rope and put him uh, and, and interrogate the rope, hey, you, what's your relationship with that nasty snake? And the rope will say, what snake? It's your problem. I see a snake there. It's your problem. I'm not a snake. <laughs> so similarly, if you ask Brahman, what's your relationship with the world? Brahman will say, what world? <laughs> you think there's a world. There's no world. There's only Brahman. So it has no relation with anything else. You can't use relation to indicate Brahman. And the last one is called convention. Convention is very simple. It's like when you name a baby, you call a baby um, Ram or Sita, and say, from now on, this child will be called Ram or Sita. How do you know? How do you use language? You pointed out this child, and from now on it's called Ram or Sita. Why can't we use a name like that? After all, you're using names. You're saying Brahman, Atman, whatever, the ultimate reality, the absolute, pure consciousness. You're using so many names, Swami. But is it? does it work like that? If you, How does this naming, this convention work? You must point out the person. This person is Ram. Then only it works. If I say, if I don't point out and I say this person is Ram, you will be at a loss. Which person? What are you talking, who are you talking about? If I don't point it out, designation is important. This is, this is called, X is called Y. You must point out what is X and then you understand, oh, this is called Y. But if you don't point out, if you simply say X is Y, nobody knows what are you talking about. Similarly, even when we are using words, Atman, Brahman, Turiya, um, the fourth, ultimate reality, absolute. None of us are any wiser because it's not been pointed out. It cannot be pointed out directly, physically, that you can't point out, this is Brahman. Here, from now on, we'll call this Brahman. So now you know, oh, a table is Brahman. It's not. But uh, <laughs> because it cannot be pointed out, this conventional method of naming, that from now on, let's call it this, it can't work. The five ways in which language works do not apply to Brahman. The ultimate reality, the five ways do not apply. Jati, uh, class or species, won't work because Brahman is, uh, there's no class of Brahman. Um, guna, quality, won't work because Brahman has, has no qualities, nirguna. Action, kriya, uh, won't work because there's no action in the absolute reality. There's no change. Um, sambandha, relationship, won't work. Because Brahman is non-dual. There's no second thing. It has no relation with anything else. And then, last one, conventional method in Sanskrit, it's called Rudi. Um, conventionally, can you name it? No, you cannot name it because you cannot point it out. Uh, you cannot separate it from everything else and say, this thing is... If you try to point it out, what happens? It's like that father trying to point out the um, screen in the movie. You'll immediately mistake a picture from the screen. So none of these work. That's why it is beyond language. And all of this explanation which I gave to you now, the philosophy of language and why it will not work, why you cannot indicate the ultimate reality through language, 
all of this Shankaracharya says in half a phrase. Shabda pravritti nimitta rahitatvat. Because the ultimate reality is devoid of the, um, the, how do I translate it? The instigators of the activity of language, let's say this way. The five factors which instigate the use of language, those are not there in the ultimate reality and therefore it cannot be uh, designated by language. <laughs> 